thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son, and living your Spirit the world. Sing this song, sing along with us, amen. Jesus, God, oh, son, ah, yeah, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Hallelujah. We thank God that Jesus came. Amen. Oh, I said we thank God that Jesus came. Hopeless people like us. Mm. Rebels. Today we can sing the glory of the Lord. What a miracle. Christmas is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. And I believe that this Christmas you... Share the love of Christ with another person. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for bringing us uh, to Calgary. Yeah. Uh, what is your name? Is it a windy city or something? That's, uh, no. I know Edmonton is city of champions. I don't know about Calgary. The uh, uh, city of Stampede. Eh? Yeah, Stampede. Let's take it like that. And for the past three days, we've been looking at the word or the theme, the word became flesh. Amen. We want to look at three scriptures, the same book, but the th three or four different verses. And then we will uh, proceed. This morning is my privilege to uh, minister with my uh, wife, uh, the only fish in my sea, right? When I go fishing, I don't struggle. <laughs> At any rate, there's only one fish. <laughs> Amen. And so she's here. I will begin and she will end the ministration this morning. Hallelujah. We want to read from John chapter 1, verse 1, verse 14, verse 17, and then verse 41. If you can throw them on the board for us. 
John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst, among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 17. He first, no, 17 before 41. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And finally, we want to read from uh, uh, verse 41. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Hallelujah. So we are going to look at this ministration in two, I mean three parts. The first part is trying to understand the principle of the word becoming flesh. Amen. And John the Apostle wrote extensively about the word, which is Jesus Christ. And he says that he was there in the beginning. Amen. And then he was with God. And then he was God. So the first thing I want us to appreciate this morning is that we are talking about God who took upon himself the human nature so he can be close to you and me. Hallelujah. Jesus could have been in heaven and he's almighty. He's sovereign. You could have just snapped his finger and everyone on earth will be saved. He's almighty. That's why he said he's almighty. If somebody's almighty, he can do any and everything. Amen. But in this scripture, Bible says that he descended. Hallelujah. And for him to descend to our level, he had to become flesh and blood like you and me. Now I want to make this statement. I don't know what it will mean to you. But God has shown us a very great lesson by becoming flesh. In that, if you want to help anybody, if you want to help any group of people, the best thing to do is to come to their level. Amen. Oh, I said amen. If you don't come to their level, you can be wherever you think you are and be propounding theories and be, 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 be calling them names and be judging them and be doing whatever you want, you will not see any change. But as you identify with their struggles, as you empathize with them, as you step to their own level, they, you begin to receive attention. Hallelujah. Are there some husbands here who wants to I mean, uh, change their wives? Or wives here who want to change their husbands? Leave your lofty position and come down to your spouse. Hallelujah. The level of your spouse. Amen. That is the best way to get people's attention. That's the best way to help people. Many times people are so proud to come down. Ah, when you go to kindergarten, these children, they are able to learn amazing things. But the teachers, they come down to their level. You go to their classroom, the teacher is sitting on the floor. And it empowers the, uh, the children. Hey, the teacher is one of them. <laughs> Amen. So whatever he is teaching them, they open their heart. They open their spirit. They open whatever they have. And before long, those children have been transformed. Oh, may we come down this Christmas. Amen. Whatever the situation is, 
no matter what you are going through, I want to recommend to you that if you want to see change, be like Jesus Christ. And he came down to the lowest of the lowest. Because when he was born, the first people who went, who, who were, uh, uh, the, the message was announced to, were the shepherd. The shepherd in Israel were the least respected people. So Jesus chose that he will be born in a manger so that the least respected will have access to him. Hallelujah. The least regarded will have access to him. He could have been born in a palace, but he chose a manger because he had come with a purpose. So the first thing I want you to know is that Jesus took on himself human nature. Jesus is not flesh. He was made flesh. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. It's like saying that Jesus took on our sin. Jesus is not a sinner, but he took on our sin so that we will be redeemed. Hallelujah. So Jesus is spirit, but he took on the nature of man so he can descend to you and me. He came down to a human level, as I've said, full of grace and truth, and Jesus is compassionate, merciful, and is full of forgiveness. I pray that somebody will receive mercy in this service. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Men know how to judge. Even those not given to us to judge, we know how to judge painfully. But Jesus is merciful. If you are here this morning, may it be that it's because of Jesus and not in any other person. Hallelujah. For his testimony is the strongest. Amen. Now, the question I want to ask again is that why would Jesus come and be born a human being? Take on humanity. And so he was divinity and humanity. Why would he do that? Number one, we want to read from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. You turn on the TV, still on. For as much as then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Continue, 14, 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Wherefore, in all things, it behoves him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hallelujah. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Oh, shout a better amen. Amen. So this is the reason why Jesus had to become flesh. Number one, says that he became flesh so that he can identify with the children of men, you and me, because we have flesh and blood. Hallelujah. And he did not choose to become an angel. Angels are spiritual beings. But he chose to become a human being so he can identify with you and me. Hallelujah. So he can come to us. And as our presenter said, live in our neighborhood. Live in our neighborhood. What a savior. What a God. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I said amen. This is enough. Hallelujah. That Jesus considered that so important that he decided to become a human being. And go through birth. Go through being raised as a little boy. Go through uh, somebody parenting him. 
What humility. If you don't get anything from Christmas, may you not miss humility. Hallelujah. Sometimes we feel too big and we lose out on the blessings of God in our lives. But Jesus showed us the way. He showed us how to make impact. Hallelujah. Even though he's God, he, can you imagine? Uh, some of us, we are, we are all human, we are, there are spirits in this room. Can you imagine the creator, the creator, he cry, if your child even speaks to you, basa basa, you are angry, you want to sack him from the house, you want to you rain insult on him, you want to condemn him, you want to uh, judge him and all that. But can you, you picture something? The one who created you and me decided that because of your salvation, he will come as a fetus, right, and hide quietly. Oh, my God. Are we learning some lessons here? Amen. For nine months, he was hiding there. Oh, my God. To be born as a baby. And I'm th saying that, look, why do we human beings arrogate to ourselves so much power and authority and that, oh, you are no match for equal, you cannot deal with me, how dare you say this? The Son of God was hiding there quietly. I pray. That if this Christmas you don't get anything at all, don't miss the humility of Christ. Don't miss the humility of Christ. Amen. Oh, I say amen. He hid there for nine months and he was born, became flesh. And the Bible is saying that he did so so that he can identify with us. Number two, he did so that he would destroy the devil's power over us by his death. So that means that Jesus wanted to die in our place. Amen. Oh, he said, Amen. For spirit cannot die for flesh and blood. Because the Bible says that for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. So man had to die. And if man had to die, spirit cannot die in place of flesh. Is somebody hearing me? Spirit cannot die. At any rate, spirit do not die anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. They can't do that. And so for Jesus to take on our sin, to take on our shame, to take on our struggles, to take on our, our disappointment and hopeless, hopelessness, Bible says that he became like you and me so he can stand in our place and die for you and that today you can be saved. Can I get a better amen in the house? Amen. So he came to die. That is why he became flesh. Amen. Amen. Number three, to set us free from slavery. You and me were slaves. Slave to sin. Isaiah chapter uh, 9 verse 2 says that the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. I've come to announce to you, it doesn't matter your educational level. It doesn't matter your money. It doesn't matter where you, what you call yourself. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. If you do not have Jesus, you are sitting in darkness. Sitting in darkness. Amen. Oh, I said amen. And that is why we must take the gospel, the preaching of the gospel serious. Amen. Being educated doesn't make you saved. Having money doesn't make you saved. But having Jesus Christ makes you a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. There are many people who have a lot of influence in our world today. But they are still sitting in darkness. Because they don't have Jesus Christ. When you are in darkness, you are hopeless. When you are in darkness, right is wrong and wrong is right to you. When you are in darkness, you can't see your way. And all of us were in darkness. And a human being could not save a human being because a blind man cannot lead a blind man. Otherwise, both of them will fall into a gutter. But thanks be to God that Jesus, the only righteous son of God, came and saved humanity. 
A righteous man can save a sinner. Shout a better amen. amen. Oh, he said amen. And so Jesus came so that you will set us free from slavery. And so what the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's in a new creature, all things have passed away and everything has become new. Number four, he became to us a merciful and a faithful high priest in all things relating to God. And then number five, he became a propitiation or an atonement of the person who took on our sins, our shame, our struggles, our sicknesses, and died in our place so that he would pay in full the wages of our sin. Hallelujah. And that if you believe in him, you no longer live in your sin, but you will be a child of God. You will be free indeed. Hallelujah. You will be free indeed if you believe in the sacrifice that he came for you. He died for you. He suffered for you. He did not need to suffer, but you and me were sinners. And Jesus did it for us. We are appreciative of what the Lord has done. May his name be glorified. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. He is able to help us when we are tempted. He overcame the devil, and he can help us through all the struggles that we have okay, as human beings. Amen. Oh, I say amen. Now, when we have received all these things, that Jesus has come to become flesh, and that he has done so to help us, what should be our response to him this morning? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. What should be our response to him? Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that it passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Hallelujah. Continue. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all point tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So the Bible is saying that because Jesus has done all these things for us, you and me must hold fast our confession. Amen. Don't joke with your salvation. Hallelujah. That's what it means. You must value your salvation. You must treasure your salvation. Because it came to you by great sacrifice. It came to you by great sacrifice. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Work on this salvation with fear and troubling. Don't joke with your salvation. Don't let any man, any woman deny you of the benefit of your salvation. Serve God and serve him well. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Let us be confident that we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. So what you are going through this morning, Jesus knows and sympathizes. Hallelujah. Because he became flesh. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Sometimes human beings, we don't understand ourselves. Amen. Somebody is telling you his problem, you have misconstrued the whole thing, and you are judging the person left, right, center, condemning the person before he finished. But Jesus doesn't do that. He sympathizes with us. Oh, hallelujah. So in your difficulties this morning, you are not alone. Jesus understands. Amen. Oh, he said, amen. He understands your tears. Sometimes we come to church, we are all nice and proper and all well behaved, but only God knows the tears we shed in our secret place. And he understands. I've come to tell somebody that Jesus understands you. He's able to sympathize with you. 
A pastor can't dis- a pastor can't d- sympathize with you. That's fine. But Jesus does. Amen. Oh, he said, Amen. I pray that this Christmas he will meet you at the point of your need. Because he understands. He understands. The pain in your heart. Sometimes you don't even need words for God to understand you. Hannah was just opening his, her lips like a fish in the sea. But God understood the heart of Hannah. Hallelujah. Oh, this Christmas, may you receive a miracle. Because the creator who understands you, amen, he will not turn you away. He will not be harsh on you. He will not judge you. I feel within my heart that some people need the comfort of, the, of this Savior this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Let's put all the pretense aside. He understands us. <laughs> Amen. He sympathizes with us. Amen. And why is he doing all these things? Because he is in that position. He said, that therefore, let us come with boldness to him. Because he will not condemn us. And then to him we will receive what? Grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy means not being treated the way you deserve. That's all mercy means. Amen. And grace is on on, on merited favor. So this morning as we close this convention, I've come to tell somebody that God has some good things for you. Hallelujah. In place of your struggles, don't run away. Don't run away from him. Come to him. He has opened his arms. He is waiting for you. That if you can lift up your voice and cry unto him, this Christmas will be a Christmas to remember. Hallelujah. In your life. Cry to him. He said, come to me. I understand you. I sympathize with you. I know where you are coming from. Because once upon a time, I was also a human being. Hallelujah. A human being. I understand you. I understand you. So don't collapse under the the burden of your sorrows. May the Lord lift every burden in this room. That is why he came. Hallelujah. So for this reason was the son of God manifested that he would destroy the works of the enemy. Any work of the enemy in your family, I pronounce them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any work of the enemy in your life, I pronounce them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any works of the enemy in your in your mind, I pronounce them destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this Christmas you arise with new favor, with new strength, with new ability. I pray that this Christmas... You will be confident. Hallelujah. Some of us, our confidence is gone. Because how much we have been trashed by our fellow human beings. May the Lord bring back your confidence. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Yeah, he became flesh so you can d- restore your confidence. He can restore your peace. Some of us, our peace is gone. May the Lord restore your peace this morning. Some of us, our joy is gone. We come to church as a matter of uh, 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 culture, as a matter of tradition. But I pray that this morning you encounter the joy giver. Hallelujah. May you receive that joy this morning. May you receive that joy this morning. He can sympathize with us. Because you became a human being. Amen. Oh, I said, amen. You're looking for a husband? He knows. He knows how to be lonely. Hallelujah. You're looking for a wife? He knows. He knows how to be lonely. And so when you say something, he can understand. And he says, when you come to me, I will not cast you away. I will give you grace. May somebody receive grace this morning. I just want to invite my wife to come and continue at this point. That we need grace in this Christmas period. And grace is available in this service. Grace is abundant in this service. Grace is here for the taking. Don't go home without this grace. May the Lord Almighty, who can sympathize with us, show his sympathy to you this morning and meet you at the point of your need.
Hallelujah. Do you know this man? Do you know this man? Hallelujah. He became flesh that you would know him. He became flesh that he would have a relationship with you. And so this morning, after hearing this word, God becoming flesh. He went through all that we go through. Hallelujah. He went through, he went through death. So he was conceived. He was a fetus in that womb. And he knows how babies go through, what they go through in the womb. He went through birth. So he was giving birth to, and he knows how, how he feels. He was breastfed. Hallelujah. He became a toddler. He grew up a teenager, a young adult. He died. During his lifetime, he went through a lot of temptations and trials, just as we go through every day. Hallelujah. And he did all this so that he will be able to help you in your time of need. And so this morning, I'm asking you, do you know him? Do you have that personal relationship with him? Yes, you come to church. Yes, you do a lot of things at church, but do you have that personal relationship? relationship with him. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, this morning is an altar call. If you do not know Jesus as your personal savior, he's calling out to you. He's calling out to you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter that you've been in church for so many years. It doesn't matter that you play the instruments very well. It doesn't matter that you sing. It doesn't matter that you lead a prayer. Do you have that personal relationship with him? For that is the most important thing. Hallelujah. And so this morning, if you don't know Christ as your personal savior, there's an opportunity for you to give your life to him. Hallelujah. The Bible says that We should go to the throne room of grace with boldness. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying that we should have that boldness and confidence to come to him. So if you do not know the Lord as your personal savior, don't sit there. Amen. It's not about the person sitting by you. It's about you knowing Christ. For if you do not know Christ, you're going to miss out on a lot of things. Joy, peace, mercy, compassion, name it. So if you are here this morning and do not know the Lord as your personal savior, I want to invite you to move forward or raise up your hand. Hallelujah. If you are shy, and you do, want, do not want to move forward or raise up your hand. The presiding elder is here. The elders are here. Apostle is here. When church is over, just move to them. Get to them and let them pray for you. Hallelujah. Secondly, from what we've heard today, the Bible is telling us that we go through a lot of challenges. Hallelujah. But Christ sympathizes with us. He does. He sympathizes with us. Amen. And so don't go back home with your challenges and your difficulties. It's Christmas. Hallelujah. Christmas season. A time of joy. A time of peace. A time of happiness. Hallelujah. And so... We've been made to know that he sympathizes with us. Christ sympathizes with us. This morning, if you want to be prayed for, move forward. Apostle is here. My role is just to call you out. And then he'll take over. Hallelujah. If you have a challenge, 
a difficulty, a burden. Hallelujah. You want to stand up. You want to move forward. You want to be prayed for. Hallelujah. It could be a challenge at your workplace. It could be with school. It could be something. It could be the fact that you are unable to sleep. You know it all. This morning, the Lord is calling you. He says, I sympathize with you. I know what you're going through. I know the challenges that you're going through. I know the cries, the tears. I know it all. I know it all. And I'm calling you to come out. Hallelujah. And so if you are here, you want to be prayed for. Don't feel shy. He says, come boldly. Hallelujah. Come boldly. Hallelujah. Come boldly. Hallelujah. So if you are here, you want to be prayed for. You want to move forward. The third thing I want to say is that, he said, if you, if you know the Lord, you still need to go through each day with the challenges and the struggles and, and you need to make decisions and you need to do so many things. You need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will direct you. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. The Holy Spirit, he will be with you. Hallelujah. To overcome challenges and trials and temptations that come our way each day. You need the Holy Spirit. So if you are here, once again, and you need the Holy Spirit, you want to move forward. You want to move forward. If you feel that you are dry, if you feel that you want to be filled, you want to move forward. It is Christmas period. A season of happiness. A season of deliverance. A season of joy. A season of peace. And so as I take my seat and invite Apostle to move forward, to come forward, if you are here, you want to accept Christ as your personal Savior. Hallelujah. You have, you're going through challenges. You want to be prayed for. You want to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a time for you to move forward. God bless you. Savior, shall we be on our feet? Savior, Savior, yeah. My right. heart. Gentle Savior, let's sing it together. Oh, pa, sweet Lord, oh, gentle
yourself in the form of being fresh. And Father God, you came and you dwell among us. Thank you, O Lord, for living everything. Thank you, O Lord, for your humility. Thank you, O Lord, for your selflessness. Thank you, O Lord, for loving us. That, Lord, you came and dwell among us. So that, Lord, you can experience what we go through. So that, Father God, you can share with us, Father God, our experiences. And because of that, Father God, you can die for us. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. And you continue to do for us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for sacrificing your one and only begotten son. So that, Father God, we can also share in your inheritance. We thank you, O oh Lord, for today. We thank you for Apostle and what, Father God, what you have used him to do this morning. We thank you, O oh Lord, for my mercy as well. May you, O oh Lord, bless them. May you continue to use them mightily, Father God, for your work. Father God, as they go and as they come, may you be with them. May you anoint them so that, Father God, they will be more impactful, O oh Lord, and be able to pour out of themselves, Father God, to others. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, prayer is given. Amen. Amen. 